Now, I know what you're thinking. No, this isn't an animal that H.P. Lovecraft has dreamed up from that depraved mind of him. Nor is it a figment of a four-year-old's imagination where he's moulded a bunch of various animals together to come up with the ultimate weird-looking creature. No, this is a weird thing, and it does actually exist, and it's from South America, and join us today as we'll learn more about it. Why hello there folks, and welcome back to Nature Explained. I'm your host Jake, and in today's feature we'll be going to South America to learn about the largest insectivore in the world, and it looks like something out of a Lovecraftian horror, capable of killing the most dangerous animal in the Americas, and its name is the Giant Anteater. Giant anteaters are found across the Americas, from Honduras in Central America to Bolivia and northern Argentina in the south, but you won't find giant anteaters along the western coast because the Andes have blocked migration into this area. They're found in pretty much, in pretty much every environment Latin America has to offer, from arid shrublands to tropical rainforests, although their populations in these regions will depend greatly on the amount of prey available. Giant anteaters are the largest member in their family, being between 182 to 217 centimetres long, with the head itself accounting for 30 centimetres, and the tail being between 55 to 65 centimetres. This species is sexually dimorphic, but it's hard to tell between the two sexes. General rule is that males are the larger of the two, weighing somewhere between 33 to 55 kilograms. Females, by comparison, will only weigh between 27 to 47 kilograms. Despite this, both sexes can reach top speeds of 30 miles per hour. They have a shaggy coat, which most commonly appears either grey or brown, but can be mottled black and white. With the purpose of this colour scheme remaining a topic of debate, with some speculating its purpose is to act as a form of disruptive camouflage, which breaks up the outline of the animal. The counter to this is that this distinct coat is actually meant to do the exact opposite, making the giant anteater stand out, acting as a form of warning to predators, similar to many species of frogs. Either way, it seems to work, because the average lifespan of a giant anteater in the wild is around 16 years. But there are records of giant anteaters who have lived for an astonishing 25 years in captivity. This long lifespan is helped by their unique adaptations this species has developed. The first of these is their ground living, which sets them apart from all other members of the anteater family, the majority of whom spend most of their lives in the trees. The reason for this shift is believed to be because giant anteaters were able to access more food than their tree-dwelling cousins. But I'll expand on this later. The result of this shift in development is that giant anteaters have developed one of the longest skulls in the animal kingdom, resulting in giant anteaters having an extremely powerful nose, which is 40 times stronger than the humans. However, this powerful nose came at a cost, particularly a small pair of eyes, which results in giant anteaters having a naff eyesight. They also have evolved a small mouth, which is limited in movement and also sacrifices all of its teeth, making it one of a handful of mammals not to possess any teeth at all. But it doesn't stop there. Because of their long skull, they've also had to evolve a thick neck to support their own head weight. Giant anteaters have also evolved a large amount of hair all over its body, as well as camouflage. Part of this evolution was intimidation, especially the tail, which is around 30 centimeters long. When moving, giant anteaters walk along the ground, much like gorillas, with the front set of appendages using their knuckles, and the hind legs being flat on the floor. The reason for this is that whilst the giant anteater has five toes, which should give it good balance, three of these have four inch claws attached to them, which are incredibly sharp, and so, if they were to walk normally, this would result in these claws wearing down, it is a vital component of their feeding behaviour, but I'll expand more on this later. As mentioned previously, it has limited mouth movement, but is large enough for the giant anteater to eat. It does this by using its 60 cm long tongue, which can only go backwards and forwards. It has to physically use its head to change their direction, but it makes up for this by flicking its tongue in and out three times a second, which, for those of you who do maths, is 160 times per minute whilst feeding. It will constantly swallow its food. Due to giant anteaters not having teeth, much like birds, they have developed hardened stomach flaps which allow them to kill their prey in their digestive system. The downside of this is that giant anteaters cannot produce their own stomach acids. They have to rely on the nutrients they obtain through their prey, as well as rocks and dirt they purposely eat. They've also had to adapt to a lower body temperature, which is around 33 degrees Celsius. 
For context, the average mammal's body temperature is around 38 degrees Celsius. This is a consequence of their diet, as giant anteaters are primarily insectivores, but will also eat some fruit and vegetables, as well as smaller animals. As you may guess from the name, ants make up 80% of their diet, with other vital elements including crickets, termites and worms, although their diet does depend on where they live, as well as the season. The general trend is that during the wet season, which is between October through to March, they will eat mostly ants, but during the dry season, they will switch to primarily termites. Giant anteaters also eat carrots, corn, rice, as well as some small creatures such as snakes, scorpions and lizards. To give you an idea of how many insects, a giant anteater will eat 30,000 insects per day and will go between 200 nests in search of food. Hey there folks, quick intermission from me. If you're enjoying today's feature, do me a solid, hit that like and subscribe button. It shows we're doing something right. If you'd like us to cover a specific animal, leave a comment below. Anyway, back to it as we start looking at some fascinating behaviours of the giant anteater. Before we begin this section, I should probably point out that because of where they live, giant anteaters are understudied in the wild. So, a lot of this information may change when new research is done. But, until that happens, this is what we know. A giant eater will travel 3,700 meters per day in search of food. The sleeping pattern of the giant anteater really depends on the temperature of its environment. If it's cold, they will be primarily urinal in order to get energy from the sun. But, when it's warm, they will switch to a nocturnal cycle. When sleeping, they often choose dense bushes but, if cold, they will go into tall grass. Once they've chosen where they'll settle down for the night, they'll dig out a small cavity in the ground and will ball up, with its tail above it, but also acting as a blanket, but simultaneously acting as camouflage. They have been known, however, to sleep on the flat ground, or in abandoned burrows of other animals. Giant anteaters can also swim, often going for baths. They can also be found standing on their hind legs searching for food in the trees. I guess they're not too dissimilar to their cousins. Giant anteaters have territories, but it varies on where they live and access to food. The range can be as small as one mile, but the largest ranges can be 12 and a half miles. Giant anteaters are mostly solitary and are mostly solitary animals, except for females and their young, as well as during the mating season. Because of their solitary life, they often pee on trees to communicate with one another, making trees to giant anteaters much like Twitter, and they can tell each other apart based on the scent of their saliva. While solitary animals, giant anteater females are more tolerant to one another in their territory and are found closer together than males, who are more aggressive and territorial, and are more likely to fight one another, using their claws and standing on their hind legs, much like a bear, as well as making noises, and eventually, one will be chased off. When hunting, they will use their large nose to track the scent. If it's a termite mound, they will use their claws to tear it open, and use their large tongues to collect prey. But, they have a limited time, because after around a minute, termites will have used their escape routes. With termites, it's different tunnels. With ants, the strategy is to begin to overwhelm the anteater using soldier ants. Giant anteaters will also, in the scenario where there is a drought, dig up the ground until they hit water, which has the effect of creating water holes for other animals. This is a very similar behaviour to that of elephants found in Africa. And despite what you may think, they're not silent. And, in my view, sound very similar to a velociraptor. So, for your pleasure, here is the sound of the giant anteater. I'm sure we can all agree that they really did deserve the title of the Lovecraftian Horror. There's no dedicated breeding season for a giant anteater, and they're able to do it all year round. Females will pee on tree, females will pee on trees to show they're pregnant, and males will follow them. A male and a female will spend three days together courting, and have been found sharing termite nests together. Giant anteaters practice monogamy, and will mate multiple times throughout the year with a variety of partners. Gestation for a pregnant female anteater will last around 170 to 190 days. And much like the California sea lion, which is another video we've done and you should probably check that out after this one, there is some evidence of delayed implantation. After this time passes, they will give birth standing up to one pup that will weigh one to two kilograms. Giant anteater pups are born blind with their eyes opening after six days. But 
much like most mammals, they will be born with fur straight out of the womb. Another carryover from the giant anteater's tree-dwelling days that they keep the pups on their back, making the pup blend into the adult's body. Pups will communicate through quiet whistles and grunts when they fall off their mother's back and will be totally reliant on their mother for sustenance. After three months, they will begin to move away from milk to solid foods and they are fully weaned after 10 months. Now technically, they could become independent, but they can hang around with their mother for a long time after this. In some cases, up to two years, until the parent becomes pregnant again, or in some male cases, leaves to start their own territory, with both sexes hitting sexual maturity at two to four years old. And it's quite impressive that they reach this point, when you consider that the giant anteater only has two threats. Unfortunately for it, they're some of the most dangerous animals in the Americas. These are, the jaguar and the puma. The main strategy for both when hunting giant anteaters will be to sneak up on the anteater and go for the neck, killing it before the giant anteater can resist. But if the predator is detected, the giant anteater has two options. Number one, run away, or go full bear mode and stand on its hind legs to deter the predator and using its sharp claws to injure the cat. But the main threat to giant anteaters are, as per always, humans. Now, as mentioned earlier, giant anteaters are not naturally aggressive and seek to avoid conflict, but they will attack if feeling threatened and have killed before. However, often these are poachers looking to hunt them for their meat, to make goods out of their hides and also to be used in traditional medicine. A funny thing I found out whilst researching for this video was when the Spanish conquistadors first saw the giant anteater, they completely misunderstood what it was with some uh, highly common ideas being that it could only reproduce for its nose and that there were only females, with many giant anteaters being sent to Europe to be displayed to the king and queen of Spain. And I gave you a quote by an actual Spanish conquistador who completely misunderstood what a giant anteater was, saying that, quote, it could reach sizes larger than a horse, with exceptional muscle power, and is a terrifying animal. Truly, I don't think the man has ever seen a giant anteater, and I think, quite bluntly, I think quite bluntly, he's talking on his ass. In the modern period, giant anteaters are threatened by deforestation, forest fires, and also the removal of their habitat for housing developments. Another issue is being hit by cars on roads. All of these factors have resulted in some localized extinctions. That all being said, it's estimated there are around 25,000 giant anteaters in the wild, placing them in the vulnerable conservation category. With that, folks, that's the giant anteater, South America's answer to the brown bear. If you've enjoyed today's feature, do me a solid, hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. As per always, Margaret has curated a selection of videos you should check out. I personally recommend our last feature on the California sea lion.